or aperture geometry now, we're going to call this uh, uh, ys xs, where our z axis is in um, the direction from left to right. And we've got our surface S1 and this large partial sphere here. And here's our observation point. That's the field that we're trying to calculate. And we've got this mirror image point over here. And we've got the vectors R0S and R0S prime here. And with respect to our Green's function, we've got an e to the j k r zero s prime over r zero s prime. And if we add in the time factor here, this is just an expanding spherical wave. Okay, essentially at this mirror image point. And then over here we have e to the j k. Um, R0s minus omega t uh, over R0s. So this is ex essentially an expanding spherical wave going that way. Okay. So our Green's function is actually just the combination of two spherical waves. Okay. Now, um, let's see. We've still got S2. So what about S2? How do we evaluate that? Well, what we'd like to say is that the integral over S2 goes to 0. That would make that integral theorem of Helmholtz and Kirchhoff very easy. Okay? And we could say, well, as the field, as the radius goes to, Z, to infinity, then uh, let's call this radius here R. Okay, and remember the normal to the surface S2 is in the same direction as R, okay, here. Then we know that the field goes to zero, you know, at infinity. And we can't quite say that yet, okay? So we have to go through a little bit of development in order to be able to say that. We are going to say that in the end, okay? But right now, we have to be a little bit more careful mathematically in order to say that. Okay, so what we're going to do is on this large partial sphere, What we have is G of R zero R S is equal to minus one over four pi E to the J K R over R minus E to the J K R prime over R prime where uh, R prime is equal to the uh, norm of R2, of R, sorry, plus R0 uh, minus R0 prime, okay? So real simply, I'll draw that for you on the board. Uh, it's not exactly equal to the magnitude of R. And we'll talk about the consequences of that in a minute. But R0 prime is just this vector. Oh, sorry. Should have drawn that to that point. OK. So we do have to consider it. <clears throat> First, we're going to work on this term, where um, <clears throat> the partial of G with respect to N is uh, partial of G with respect to N of minus 1 over 4 pi. 
e to the j k r over r. All right. Well, that's pretty easy because the normal derivative here is in the direction of r. Okay. So what we have is minus one over four pi, just j k e to the j k r over r. That's the derivative using the product rule of the first part here, the e to the j k r. And now I do the one over r partial derivative, and I get minus one over r squared e to the j k r. Okay. So uh, we can see as, uh, let's see, let's write this, minus one over four pi j k minus one over r times e to the j k r over r. So as uh, r approaches infinity, then this one over r term, we can say that goes to zero. We can say that. Okay. So this is then approximately minus one over four pi times j k e to the j k r over r. All right. So let's set that back into our um, integral theorem over S2 for um, this uh, first part um, of the Green's function. And on S2, uh, substituting back into the equation for, I'm just going to consider that surface integral now, part of the total sur surface integral, uh, just the integral over S2. Uh, our result here for the partial derivative, minus jk over 4 pi, e to the jkr over r, us of rs, and then um, we've got two parts of that, e to the j k r, sorry, e to the j k r over 4 pi r, and then partial us of rs with respect to the surface normal. Okay. Now, the reason we have to include this term is because the Green's function was designed to be uh, zero over S1, but not S2. All right? So over S2, that uh, large partial sphere, we can't say that G is equal to zero. All right? So we have to keep that partial derivative of the incident field on S2 in the equation for the surface integral. Okay, so what does this turn out to be? It's just taking the four pi's outside, integral over S2 of minus J K U S R S plus partial derivative of us respect to the surface normal e to the j k r over r uh, d r s okay now uh, we're going to change to spherical coordinates All right, and uh, in that case, uh, the drs term, the, if we were on a plane, it would be dx dy, um, is r squared d omega, 
where this is the differential solid angle. Okay, and our expression becomes 1 over 4 pi times uh, the solid angle subtended by the large partial sphere, partial with respect to US RS. Uh, surface normal minus JK US RS E to the JK R. Oh, hold on a second. JK. Yep. JK. With the R squared there, I have an R D omega. Okay. And at this point, if I had a shock collar on, Ariel in the projection booth would be hitting the button. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Can you give me five minutes or not? I'll let you guys vote. You want to hear the rest of it on Tuesday? Or do you want to? Okay. Who wants to hear it on Tuesday? Who wants to hear it today? Oh. Okay. Well, since you're tied, I'm the chairman of the board. <laughs> So, okay, here we go, real quick, five lines. Okay, so we'd like to say that this guy goes to zero so that we can ignore it. We can't quite say that yet, all right? That <clears throat> uh, should be a capital R. Thank you. Okay. All right. Now, what we're going to assume, assume U, uh, U.S. vanishes as um, fast vanishes at least as fast as a spherical wave. Okay. So U.S. R.S. is at, at the the, fat, the uh, slowest decay equal to an expanded spherical wave. Okay. Then the limit as R approaches infinity of this bracketed term here. times the uh, rest of the integrand. Okay, what is that? Well, uh, that's the limit as r approaches infinity of, let's see, we've done this partial enough times. Uh, so this is just jk minus 1 over r us of rs, assuming that we have the spherical wave, minus jk U.S. R.S. times E to the J.K.R. times R. All right. So these guys cancel. And what we're left with is uh, the limit. Oh, let's see. What else can we cancel? We can cancel this guy and this guy. So what we have is uh, the limit as R approaches infinity of minus U.S. Rs uh, e to the jkr, all right, and um, it, this is if us is like this, then um, this whole integral or this whole limit goes to zero because you've got the one over r term there, okay, in us. So all that's saying is that we can ignore the integral over S2. Okay, this is called the Sommerfeld radiation condition. Okay, and uh, it allows us to simplify that uh, integral theorem of Helmholtz and Kirchhoff very 
uh, very much by not needing to understand what's happening over this large partial sphere. We can assume that that goes to infinity. And as long as the incident field vanishes at least as fast as a spherical wave, then this condition is true and we can ignore the integral over S2. 